Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here, the Raptors Digest, Riker, Fred Van Vliet, obviously the Toronto Raptors' biggest free agent right now. There's been a lot of talks and a lot of things coming out about his potential free agency. It's just around the corner, and we've known this from the jump. Fred is trying to get paid, and he came out and said it pretty bluntly on the JJ Redick podcast, but... You know, what What do you think this means? And after just watching that video, how do you sort of feel about Fred Van Vliet now going into this free agency? That how I feel about him maybe is unchanged. We knew that that was his M.O. We, we, when we went and did that press sort of media coverage of him at the And One event, which we'll also bring up, there's some, some news around his sponsorships and his brand endorsements. But he talked a lot about he needs to make the, the financially – correct decision for him which you know we like i said that's his mo that we knew that he's this kind of guy but ben prepare for controversy this is this is a controversial thing i'm about to say and i'm not extraordinarily qualified to say it because (laughs) i'm not an nba player and i've never made over a million dollar salary but it's a pretty weak argument he's coming out with to say he's already won a championship now he's just looking to get paid i mean you weren't the star player on that team yeah you got that one finals mvp vote but you were by far a top option on the team. You had a great series against the Golden State Warriors, but that wasn't your team. You, you didn't you didn't win the championship. You were part of a championship team. And if the Raptors are going to come around and offer you 20 million, 22 million, which we said we expect, that's probably the range. And you're going to go to a bum team like the Knicks or the Hornets. I don't know exactly. We'll break down who's offering him money for three, four million dollars more per year when you're already going to make 22 on a championship contending team. That's a weak argument. I was disappointed to hear that, Ben. Yeah, for sure. And I'll, I'll bring up the, I'll say the full quote, because obviously we've known from the jump that, that Fred wants to get paid. But as you said, he, he brought up and specifically said he already won a championship. So now he's just looking to cash out. That's what his big thing, this free agency is. And obviously that can be interpreted as, you know, he's not looking for the greatest roster. He's just looking for the most amount of money. So I'd agree with you there. And Yes, if he wants to, if he's prioritizing pay, it completely makes sense. This is his first real shot at a big contract the, with the pandemic, with injuries. You never really know if you're going to be able to cash out again. So I, I see where he's coming from with the extra bit of money. But I, where, where it's just taken up so many headlines is how it was said. And do you think, because within the context of the rest of the podcast, he still spoke highly of the Raptors. He still said there's videos of him coming out that like the past few days with him working with Kyle Lowry and stuff. But that quote in sort of isolation makes it seem like, as you said, a trash team like the Knicks, the Hawks or whoever, you know, they come out and say, hey, we're going to give you those extra million dollars. Did you get that sort of vibe from him in that podcast? Because I, I tend, I, I lean, I'd agree with you in the sense that I think it would be dumb to sort of go to one of those teams for less, you know, if you're only sacrificing if like one, two million, but do you, is that the impression you got from that, that podcast? It is kind of the impression that I got, Ben. And the reason we're put, we're tossing out Knicks, we're tossing out, tossing out Pistons, Hawks. Those were the teams at the very onset of free agency news that were reportedly going to be making a pitch for Fred Van Vliet. So we're not just pulling those names out of nowhere. You look Mm -hmm. at their cap space. Pistons are only, booked for about 70 million on their total team payroll next year they only have one guy Blake Griffin on max money New York Knicks have no guys on max money so they have availability to come in and cash Fred out at 28 30 million dollars if that's what they wanted to we didn't think his value is necessarily there he's not even an all-star yet for Pete's sake but let's just assume that that's the money that he's going to be offered Ben it, it, it we, we kind of agreed in our initial assessment the Raptors probably wouldn't be comfortable to max him out, probably give him $30 million. Now you have four guys on max money if you re-sign Ibaka, basically. You have Pascal and Fred long-term. You still want to re-sign OG. You don't know what you're going to do with Norm a season or two down the road. You still want to be able to sign Giannis. That's a lot of money to put up front on a team you know doesn't get it done on their own. And Ben, the reason that, again, I'm discouraged by him saying, I just want to cash out. Basketball it's a privilege to be able to play and do something, get paid for something that's just fun that, you know, we play on our own and millions of people around the world play on their own, but you still need to have a sense of purpose. And if you're, (laughs) again, you're not the guy, you aren't the guy, you're six foot, you you struggle to get it done in the paint. You're not going to be able to walk onto a bad roster and all of a sudden make, make the team a playoff team. You don't have the clout to draw in free agents with you. You don't have the ability to get it done yourself, Ben. I was disappointed by his comments. 
Yeah, I'm less disappointed because I think if he chooses that, I can res- chooses the the path of more money. I can respect that. I can respect him trying to, you know, get the bag while he has the opportunity in a weak free agency class. You know, as you said, he hasn't been an all star. If a team throws at him, because I guess the the three million per year does add up to ten, twelve million over the course of four or five years, however long his contract ends up being. So I, I wouldn't be you know mad at the guy or blame the guy if he ends up doing that. But I definitely see where you're coming from because. The players that go to the Knicks, they do seem very purposeless, so to speak, to put it into your terms. Because, you know, as you said, the rosters will be struggling. He's not like a Kevin Durant type of player where he could just come in and completely change the course of the franchise. Maybe he believes he is, as he said, bet bet on yourself. But would you do you predict he's going to leave after hearing this? Because, you know, analysts like John Holger, the one of the numbers guys for ble- for the Athletics, sorry, he predicts that he's going to go to the Atlanta Hawks. We've already thrown out teams like the Pistons and uh, the Pistons and the Knicks. So what's what's your sort of prediction right now? Because we, you know, if we expect him to leave, if we're in the camp that we think he's going to leave, which I don't think I'm there yet, then there's some players we could potentially talk about potentially sign and trading for them or other guys we should target because there's there's other names we, we're going to bring up that we have certainly brought up in the past, Riker. Well, that's exactly it. And he's an unrestricted free agent, right? Yes. Yeah, so the Raptors, they don't have the right to come in and match any any offer, but I don't think they're going to let him just walk. It is much more strategic from the Raptors to, if they if they hear, and hopefully they don't, they don't get swindled by his camp, but... And I don't suspect that that's how it would play out anyways. But if they hear that he's going to be leaving for a $30 million deal over four or five years, it doesn't really matter. Anything, anything in one year, I, again, I'm, I'm fine to give big money to anybody in one year because it gives you that cap space come next free agency. But anything over two years or more, you start dealing with that kind of salary, then you need to start thinking more long term. And if they hear that he's going to be walking for that big of money and you're, the Raptors as a franchise won't get any value in return, I'd match it right away and then look for those sign and trade options that have been bubbling and we've been talking about for a while. <laughs> Drew Holiday, Victor Oladipo, Bradley Beal. That one wouldn't happen. I just wanted to plug it because I love that guy. I would love to have him on the Raptors. But Ben, what do you think? I, to me, it makes sense if he's going to be getting paid $30 million, Maybe that's outside the Raptors threshold, but I definitely see them trying to make something happen that they can get some value back. Well, Riker, you and I were debating sort of milking the Oladipo train a little bit more, but we're going to bring him up again because there was some Raptors news. It kind of died off with a little bit of a second report, but we definitely got to cover it because Oladipo apparently last season was going up to different teams and saying, yo, can I can I join your squad next year or can I come play with y'all? He said that to the Knicks, he said it to the Heat, and he said it to the Toronto Raptors in front of his teammates during, during games, Riker, during games. And, Which you know, he's is... vehemently denied, but I mean, if once these reports come out, it sounds like they're probably true. Yeah, and with everything that's sort of accumulated, I I definitely buy it. And the Raptors were obviously attached to that, but you know, as you said, he's denied it. So I guess it's sort of a a light report. But obviously, you have to deny something like that. He's still under contract for the Toronto Ra- uh, for the Indiana Pacers, sorry. But you know, with all the trade rumors and all that, he has come out and said, which kind of. Led, led the hype die down a little bit. He said he's 100% committed to the Pacers going into next season, but that doesn't mean he's looking to stay there long term. That doesn't mean any of the rumors or anything have, you know, or the Pacers are any less inclined to trade him after everything that's come out. So would you, especially if Fred VanVleet, if we think he's going to get scooped up by another team, would you be down to sort of maybe even sign and trade for Depot with Fred or maybe give up some other assets to get Depot? Because from all accounts, his trade value is not that high right now in terms of Victor Oladipo. No, and and he's locked in right now next season at $21 million. And the argument comes around, you know, do you want to bring him in if he has the chance of walking away the season following? And, and then all the arguments based on is he even a fraction of what he was prior mm-hmm. to his two seasons long worth injuries but what's interesting is he is set at that 21 million dollars and if you're going to be doing a sign and trade for fred he's going to be at 28 or 30 million dollars right that's what he's going to be walking for so you you have some extra flexibility there where you can you can look for some more value on top of that if you want a shooter like doug mcdermott i mean i wouldn't be jumping at the bits (laughs) for doug mcdermott but maybe one of the holiday brothers 
you know, maybe you want to add Norman Powell in and maybe you want to bring in Oladipo and Miles Turner. Like maybe there, you can get a little bit crazy with uh, combinations here if you're guaranteed that you're putting trade uh, Fred up on the trade block, Ben. Yeah, well, you brought up a holiday on uh, on the Pacers. Maybe that would make a, another holiday in the NBA, maybe one of their brothers, if they're so inclined to, to come to the Toronto Raptors. But I think we have a, a whole video on that coming, probably dropping tomorrow. So we'll save the, the other Drew Holiday talks because it seems like every Raptors fan has wanted Drew Holiday for the past two years. But, Riker, the more I think about it, the more I think it might be worth the risk to get Oladipo if Fred is going to leave. If Fred's going to dip, then yes, Depot is the risk, as you brought up, the injuries, the uncertainty if he's going to bounce back. But we made a risk when we traded for Kawhi Leonard. We made a risk, you know, trading Vasquez for a couple of unproven picks, and that ended up being Norman Powell and OG Ananobi, right? Masai Ujiri makes calculated risks, and the ceiling with the Toronto Raptors with a prime Depot, with a primetime Oladipo, Lowry Depot, OG Siakam Surge, that's a lineup to really be reckoned with. And, you know, you might say that he's not as good of a shooter as Fred, but he has the size, he has the finishing ability, and he has the shooting touch. Not as good as Fred, but at a decent enough level. I think he, he'd he be a Raptors-style player. I don't know. I, I'm starting to buy into the Depot hype, Riker. Yeah, and this is how I'm thinking. This is my narrative that's going on in my brain, Ben. Fred VanVleet, he gets offered $30 million by a bad team. The Raptors, they match it. Now, he accepts because it's the Raptors. They're in a better position mm-hmm. to win. Yep. Whatever. Maybe he has a vendetta against Toronto as a city, but I haven't heard any news to support that. So the Raptors, they win the free agency bid because they give him just as much money as the next best guy. They have him. They could just keep him at that point. But we're saying, no, it doesn't make sense to keep Fred long-term on a max contract with what we're trying to do in the future with other free agents. You look at Oladipo. Yeah, he has a tremendous risk. But if it doesn't work out, he's a free agent next season. You don't need Mm -hmm. to keep him around, right? If it works out extremely well and then he walks and you actually wanted to keep him around, then that's just embarrassing. But, you know, the Raptors, if you're you're guaranteed you're losing Fred and we're going to have a video breaking down the reports around potentially losing Ibaka, Lowry's getting aged, you know, I think the Raptors are kind of pushing towards maybe rebuilding or doing some sort of monumental paradigm shift type thing. So I, I'm completely agreeing with you, Ben. If Fred Van Vliet is out the door, I think it's time to get a little bit crazy and buy in with that high-risk, high-reward type player. Yeah. No, you got you to gotta take risks, especially, especially if you don't want to be bad. And we've seen teams like the Houston Rockets, these teams that have been per- perennially good for many years, right? They they take some things. Sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. But that's how the good teams stay good. And you trade for guys like Depot if you're losing talent. But I don't know. Yes, no. What's your prediction? Do you think he stays or do you think he doesn't, Riker? Because if I had to do a yes, no with no nuance, I do think he stays. But I think it's going to be for a little bit more money than the Raptors would sort of prefer. I think no. No? Because I think he does not stay because... When we initially qualified this rumor, we said Fred Van Vliet is probably going to get offered max money by a lesser team. But we said mm-hmm. by virtue of the Raptors being better organization, already knowing him, giving him that leadership role as Kyle Lowry sort of fades out of it, he would accept a little bit less money, 20, $22 million, just to compete with them. But with him saying he's just looking for the most money possible – doesn't make sense to me to keep Fred around on Max Deal. He's not that guy. He's not that guy. Maybe there's an argument to say that he is. I am completely not in that belief. Yeah, and, you know, he, he certainly hasn't bashed the Raptors. He's always spoke highly of the Toronto Raptors team, right? There's there's nothing to say that he doesn't like his time in Toronto, but during, especially the podcast, because this is what this whole sort of chat, this discussion was sparred off of, listening to that podcast, he brought up things like, you know, he doesn't have a house in Toronto right now. He ended up selling or he was just renting. So he doesn't really know where he's going to stay next season, especially with all the stuff being in Tampa and stuff. He just alluded to a lot of things that seemed a bit, just a little bit sketchy for a guy. Because Sergi Baca, we're making a video on him. I think we're that'll come out in the next couple days too. Sergi Baca has adamantly said he wants to stay. He's keeping, you know, he, he's come out on Twitter. He's posting We the North stuff. He's all in on Toronto from his tone of voice is you know just his quotes Fred Van Vliet's been a little bit more secure maybe that's just personality trait and whatnot but 
I don't know. That that's that's a, a point in your favor, but I just believe the Toronto Raptors won't let talent walk like that. And unless they have a guy like Oladipo or Holiday coming through the door, I don't see us letting Fred walk, Gregor. But answer me this, Ben, because to me the argument is not would the Raptors make sure they sign him. I think one way or another they're gonna sign him, but I, I don't know if they'd want to keep him if they signed him at thirty million. Rather I than see- obviously flip him. But Ben, the question is, mm-hmm. do you think he is going to get 25 to 30 million dollar offer from another team because that's to me that's what would get him out the door or not so the reports are saying they're all over the place the hollinger came out with the the 25 to 30 million there's articles saying that they expect 20 to 22 people don't even know if the raptors would match a 20 to 22 million dollar deal his you know his value is just super unclear and it makes sense because he's been in a great system he's won a championship he's been a a starting guard on a team that has gone deep into the playoffs, but uh, he's also a six foot playing six footer playing off ball. Never been an all star. These sorts of things. So it's it's a really weird predicament. It's weird with the the pandemic that's happened. We don't know where people where the salary cap's going to be, especially not. It's everything sort of lined up now, but with one year down the line and. You know, we also don't really know the Terrence Davis situation. We don't know where our other backup guards are going to be. So it's there's so many factors to take into account. It's tough to sort of piece it all together. But let's know what you guys think. Do you guys think Fred Van Vliet's going to stay? Do you think if he leaves, we should trade for a guy like Oladipo? We sort of covered a lot of reports. The news is coming coming on fire. It's just coming from all places. So stay tuned to the Raptors Digest. Subscribe if you're not. Riker, you have any last words? I'm worried, Ben. I'm nervous by these reports. Cheers. Cheers.